bread of life today will come from Ezekiel chapter 40, verses 17 through 19. Then he brought me into the outer court, and behold, there were chambers and a pavement made for the court all around. Thirty chambers faced the pavement. The pavement, that is the lower pavement, was by the side of the gates, corresponding to the length of the gates. Then he measured the width from the front of the lower gate to the exterior of the inner court, a hundred cubits on the east and on the north. This is the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us online. And uh, according to the main passage today in Ezekiel chapter 40, verse 17 through 19, I want to share a message entitled, The Pillars and Pavement of Ezekiel's Temple. And this is part two. Uh, yesterday, we covered the pillars of uh, the Ezekiel Temple, and we saw that there were porches of pillars that were set up. Uh, today, we will cover about the pavement and the 30 chambers, and then next Saturday, we'll put them together. How do these two uh, things relate to each other? And so, if you look at Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 10, uh, God gave the reason why He showed the structure of the temple to the prophet Ezekiel. He gave the reason why he showed him the vision and all of the appearance of the temple. And if you look at Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 10, it says that through showing them the structure and design of the temple, God wanted to make the people ashamed of their iniquities and wanted them to measure the plan. And so this tells us that through these studies, we need to look at ourselves. Many people, uh, they judge others from their standard. But through the Ezekiel temple, we need to judge ourselves from the standard that God has set up. And so through these studies, we need to see ourselves and where we are at with God. And so today, we're going to cover the pavement. Now, the pavement is the third place that Ezekiel was shown in the temple. And the this is the structure of the temple. The first was the wall around that God showed, the wall around. And so this is the wall around here. Maybe use a different color. And so this wall around was shown to Ezekiel the prophet. And then secondly, uh, the gate facing east, the gate facing east of the outer court. So this is the outer court here. And the gate that is facing east is here. of the outer court. And third, God showed him, now in today's main passage, He showed him the pavement uh, with the 30 chambers that were in there. And so uh, the pavement is in this area. We'll mark it with a different color. And so it is this area that's connected to the gates, this area. And you have to put in the gate that's on the south and also on the north. And so all this area is the pavement. This is the lower pavement. And then also, uh, there were gates of the inner court like this. Uh, and so, also in this area here was the upper pavement. And so, uh, today's main passage is talking about pavement with the pillars and uh, the, the chambers. And the chambers were here, five on the, the left and right. And it's the same pattern. And so here, uh, we see that God showed the pavement. 
and the 30 chambers. And so through this study, we're going to understand why did God show this pavement with these 30 chambers? Well, what does it mean for us? And especially as we head into the General Assembly, what does it mean for the workers of Shiloh? What does it mean for uh, the congregation of Shiloh? And how does that apply to me? And through the study, we'll start to go over that. And we'll see what kind of faith and posture that I need in these end times. And so I pray that through this study, that you may be able to discover yourself the tasks that God has given to you and the blessings that God has promised. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. So first of all, uh, we'll go over the... Hebrew word. So first point that we want to look over is the meaning of pavement, the meaning in Hebrew. And so pavement, uh, it, there are three words that are related together. And the first one is rispa, rispa, rispa. And so here... Okay, so here, this means coal, or it means uh, mosaic. Uh, but this actually, this word rispa, which means coal or mosaic, it was derived from the word retsa, retsa. So it was derived from the word uh, Seb, sorry. Retsep. And this means a fiery stone. Fiery stone. It uh, means coal as well. Or precious stones. Precious stones. And then there's also another word, and it's a uh, ratsef. Ratsef. And ratsef. And here, ratsef. This means it's a uh, mosaic fitted together. Mosaic. Fitted together. And this is for decoration. So it has these three words. The word is used, ritzpa, which means coal or mosaic, but it also means fiery stone. And uh, there are, it also means like tiles. So if you look at the olden di days, they had these tiles of stones that they laid on the foundation, whether it was over uh, uh, the cement or the pavement, they put these tiles uh, as a pavement. And so those are the meanings of this word. And if you look at the main passage uh, in 17 verses 17 through 19, it was the pavement all around. And so if you look at this picture again, this pavement goes all the way around like this. And this this is of uh, the lower pavement. This is lower pavement. And to say that there's lower pavement, there's also upper pavement. And this all around, so all around is Sabib, Sabib. This all around is Sabib twice. So, Sabib and Sabib times two. So, Sabib, Sabib, it was all around. And in our main passage, it was attached next to the gate. So, what this means is it was exactly 
together connected to the gates. So you have gates on each uh, direction here. And so it's on each side corresponding to the measurement of the gate. And if we studied before, as you remember, the distance is 50 cubits. So 50 cubits, which is 26.6 meters. 26.6 meters. So the same length from here to here is 50 cubits, and it goes all the way around. And this is describing the lower pavement. And then there are chambers, five on each side in each direction. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So altogether, there are 30 rooms or chambers in the lower pavement. And so as you come into the gate, seven steps there, these, this uh, corridor of pillars are there, and this pavement is all around the temple on the outside border. And this has a significant meaning for us today. And so here we looked at the meaning of uh, the word pavement in the Hebrew language, but now let's look at it, uh, the word pavement as it is used in the Bible, and we'll see its usage. So secondly, we'll see the usage. in the Bible. So secondly, we'll see the usage in the Bible. The usage in the Bible. So first, uh, if you can recall, when the Israelites came to the wilderness of Sinai and God ratified the covenant with them, um, they went up onto the mountain. So uh, after the fourth ascent, God ratified the covenant, he gave the Ten Commandments, he gave the specific laws to Moses, and then uh, on the seventh day of the third month, so seventh day of the third month in 1446 B.C., uh, Aaron and Moses, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 elders went up to the mountain of God. And the Bible says in Exodus chapter 24, verses 8 through 10, that they saw God. So after they ratified the covenant, they went up to the mountain, they saw God, and under His feet was a pavement. We'll look at this in a moment. And the pavement was like sapphire. So sapphire is representing uh, purity. It's clear and transparent. And here, the thing, important thing that we want to mention is that they saw God. They saw God. So relationship was restored. Relationship was restored. Not only did they see God, but what did they do? They had fellowship with God through the uh, ceremony meal. So there was... a uh, the ratification ceremony, there was a ceremony, and there was a meal. So the people ate together in God's presence. This is very important. Why? Because we just said that there were 30 rooms that people used, and one of the usage, usages for the chambers was to eat to have fellowship. These were one of the usages for the 30 chambers. So they would take the sacrifice uh, or the food and what was allowed to them, they would eat together. And so these rooms represent fellowship. But not just fellowship with each other, fellowship with God. So in this case, they saw God and uh, under His feet was a pavement. And this was during the ratification ceremony and meal. Let's look up the passage, Exodus chapter 24, uh, verse uh, 8 through 10. Uh, let's look that up. 
uh, for the sake of time, we can just start at verse 9. So Exodus chapter 24, verse 9 and 10. Uh, let's turn to that and read it together. Exodus 24, verse 9 and 10. Ready, begin. Then Moses went up with Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. And under his feet there appeared to be a pavement of sapphire as clear as the sky itself. Wow. So, again, this was representing God's fellowship, the fellowship with God. They were able to be restored through the covenant with God, and they had fellowship. They had the ratification ceremony meal. And so we see that this is very important when we come to the Bible. Also, let's look at a couple of more verses here, uh, just as a reference. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 4. And there was the pavement there, and also Esther verse, chapter 1, verse 6. So uh, we want to look at these two passages. So we're looking at the usage of pavement in the Bible. And they finished the Solomon's temple, and they were dedicating it to God. And then the God's glory came, filled the temple, and then uh, they worshiped before God in the pavement of the temple. So 2 Kings, uh, sorry, 2 Chronicles, pardon me. 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter uh, 7. We'll go uh, verse 3 and 4. 3 and 4. Let's read uh, 3 all together first. Ready, begin. And all of the sons of Israel, seeing the fire come down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, bowed down on the pavement. Where? On the pavement with their faces to the ground. And they worshipped and gave praise to the Lord, saying, Truly He is good. Truly His loving kindness is everlasting. So let's stop there. So what happened? God's glory came and they worshipped. They bowed down and prostrated themselves in God's presence. Let's look at Esther chapter 1, verse 6. Uh, turn to Esther chapter 1, verse 6. I'll read it for you. There were hangings of fine white and violet linen held by cords of fine purple linen on silver rings and marble columns and couches of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and precious stones. And so here we see that in King Ahasuerus' palace, there was a pavement with a mosaic of different kinds of precious stones. And so here uh, we see that uh, when they use pavement, it is for a king's palace or when God's presence is amongst the people. This word pavement is used. This word pavement. And so... I believe that when we come into the church, that this is the pavement of God. Amen? And this is the place where we are restored to God in fellowship. And this is the place where we are restored with each other. And so when we come to the church, we are stepping into the pavement. And we are stepping into the place of the chambers where we fellowship and eat together. And I pray that through the blood of Jesus Christ, that you may receive Him into your heart once again. And may you be reconciled with God, and may you also be reconciled with each other. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Also, uh, this is a little bit more clearly explained through the calling of Moses. So, number three, let's look at the redemptive historical meaning. So, redemptive, last point, number three, redemptive historical meaning. So, what does this mean in terms of uh, Christ and what does it mean in terms of us? And this can be best described through the calling of Moses. In Exodus 
uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. And you all know the story where Moses is an old man now, 80 years old. He spent 40 years in the wilderness. But now it was time uh, to have Moses lead the people out of uh, Egypt. And so God calls him on Mount Horeb. Uh, he calls him through the burning bush. And as Moses approached this burning bush, uh, God calls out from this burning bush and says, Moses, uh, the ground that you are standing on is holy ground. And so God says, take off your shoes or take off your sandals. Take off your sandals. And God was commanding respect and reverence to him. Uh, if you look at Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 5, verse 1, uh, it says that when you come into the house of God, that you need to guard your steps and come closely to the Word of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1. So I'll read that for you. I'll read Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Guard your steps as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools for they do not know uh, they are doing evil. And so they do not know that they are doing evil. So when you come into the house of God, it says guard your steps, guard your feet. And it says come closely to listen to the word of God. And so this teaches us that when we come to church or when we are worshiping from home because of the COVID, our home becomes the spiritual pavement. Amen? So you people at home as you worship, that place becomes a spiritual pavement where God's glory manifests, where His presence is there, His grace and His word and His abundant glory is full and his love is abounding and so i believe that in your houses is the spiritual sanctuary that is the spiritual pavement and like moses even though we are at home we need to take up our spiritual shoes what does that mean and we need to bow before god and so to take off sandals it means to deal with sin so god wanted to Deal with Moses' sin. So what was the sin, what was the sin of Moses? Uh, first of all, it was the sin of self-will. So first of all, self-will. So these are my thoughts. So if you look at Genesis chapter 49, verse 6, it says that Simeon and Levi, they slew the Shechemites, the, uh, the people, in their self-will. It was not God's will, but it was their own will, out of their own anger and emotion. And so God wanted to take away the self-will of Moses. God wanted Moses to be obedient only to God's will. God wanted Moses to follow only the ways of God. And so uh, sometimes we have our thoughts. We have things that we think are right. We have our preconditioned thoughts. But God says, I want you to get rid of all of that. And I want you to take on my thoughts. And so Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55, verses 9 through 11, it says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. As the, high, the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts higher than ours. So we need to always have the thoughts of the Spirit, have the thoughts of man. Uh, uh, do not have the thoughts of man. And if you look at Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 6, it says, The thoughts of the flesh lead to death, but the thoughts of the Spirit are life and peace. So 
as we are being called, you and I are being called in the general assemblies. See, the general assemblies is the day of Pentecost for the Israelites. That's when they receive the word. That's when they receive the covenant of God. And Shiloh is going into the general assemblies in September 20th. And this is the day that God comes down. That's the key point of the general assembly. God comes down. He gives his word. We enter into a covenant. And God calls us to be his workers and to be his leaders. But in order for us to work for him, in order for us to be his workers, we need to take away our thoughts. Secondly, we need to take away impatience. Impatience. So Moses had impatience. Uh, what does that mean? In Acts chapter 7, verses 24 and 25, it records how uh, here it says that Moses at the age of 40 struck down the Egyptian. And uh, he thought that by killing the Egyptian that his brothers would say, ah, he is our savior, our leader. That's what he thought. But that was not God's way. And so we see that Moses was impatient. He was uh, zeal overzealous. And he did not come into the right time of God. And so God led him into the wilderness. And so we need to take away our impatience. Wait for the time of God. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and He will lift you up in due time. And so we have so many things that we want to do. You know, you're on fire for God. God has called you, and you have this great vision. But at the same time, you have to work along with God's timing. Sometimes He says, go. Sometimes He says, stop. Sometimes He says, slow down. And God wants us to work in His time. So we need to get a, um, our impatience away from us. Another thing, thirdly, that God wants to deal with is the sin of despair. So three, giving up, despair. Despair and giving up. So here, Moses is 80 years old now. Despair and giving up. Moses is 80 years old, and God calls him. And Moses says, uh, I don't know if I can do it anymore. So it, he, he goes the other way. He says, I don't want to do it. You know, I'm an old man. Uh, but he had the sin of not trusting God. He gave up on himself, and he gave up on God. He needed to trust God and believe that God could use him. But he says, not me. Send somebody else. So God is calling you and I. He is calling our, our president-elect, Rick Jung, as our new departmental president. But now he's calling each and every one of you to become his workers as part of Shiloh. And he's calling you. But God is saying, whom shall I send? And we need to say, here am I, send me. I want to volunteer freely for God's will. Let me be the one to do your will. And so I pray that as Moses came to the calling of God, that we too may be able to listen to the call of God and be obedient. Say amen. In Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 10, God says, Who am I? Uh, where, um, who, shall, who shall I send? And Isaiah the prophet says, here am I, send me. So I pray that you and I answer the call of God and be able to go forth in being God's workers of these end time. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Now last, we'll go through a conclusion. So conclusion. So uh, we'll discuss what we learned until now, and then we'll go into the conclusion. So we, we 
talked about the wall around uh, the gate facing east of the outer court. And today, we talked about the pavement and the 30 chambers. And so what does, what does this mean for us? This means that we need to be reconciled to God. And we need to be reconciled to each other. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says that, Pursue peace with all men, for without the sanctification, you cannot see God. Pursue peace. So sometimes when we work with each other and you don't like each other, you just want to quit and go somewhere else. But it says, pursue peace with all men. If you run away and go somewhere else, God is going to send somebody that's 10 times worse than that person, and you're going to meet that person somewhere else, and they're going to uh, be a trouble for you, a thorn in your flesh. And it, if you do not, you know, uh, take care of others, then people will not take care of you. And so we need to pursue peace with all men. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13 through 16 says that God has abolished the barrier and made the two into one. So Gentile and uh, also the Jews, he made into one new man in Christ. And he also broke down the barriers not only with each other, but with God. So it's the blessings of the cross. Reconciliation with each other, reconciliation with God. And so that's what these pavements mean. The chambers, it represents God restoring our relationship through the covenant and ha having fellowship with Him. So I pray that you and I can be restored to each other and restored to God. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. And one more thing that I want to mention as a conclusion is that this pavement or ground is a picture of our hearts, is a picture of our hearts. And so we learned in the parable of the sower and the seed that ground is a reflection of our heart. So why is that important? In order to see God, Matthew 5, 8 says that, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the who? Pure in heart. So the pavement, the pavement has to be like a sapphire. It has to be clear. It has to be pure. Your heart has to be uh, sanctified. It has to be washed. It has to be cleansed. And God has to uh, make you reborn. And so your ground... Your heart or your pavement is pure, clear, and it is like sapphire. Then you will be able to see God. Do you see how it all comes together? Our hearts are like the pavement. If you look at also Revelation chapter 21, verse 21, it says that there was uh, streets of pure gold. Streets of pure gold. Uh, let's look up this one passage and I'll uh, make a conclusion. So Revelation chapter 21, verse 21, 21, 21. And this is the last verse that we'll read together. Uh, ready, begin. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each of one of the gates was a single pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. Ah, the streets, the pavement of the new Jerusalem was pure gold, clear. So that's talking about our pure hearts. And it's gold, purified, means our faith, which is purified by pure gold. Job 23.10 says, For I do not know the way that I go, but when I am refined by him, I will come out like pure gold. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7 also says that your faith is being tried like a fi like in fire so that it will be more precious than gold. And so we are going through a very difficult time in this COVID-19. 
This is a big trial, a tribulation. Some of us are going through very hot, fiery trials. But our faith needs to be like a pure gold and a street that is clear and transparent so that we can see God. And that's how we can enter into the New Jerusalem, uh, the temple of Ezekiel in the New Jerusalem uh, through this sanctification and this holiness. So I pray that as you learn about the pillars yesterday, so if you didn't learn about the pillars, go into the YouTube or Shiloh International homepage, learn about the pillars because it's talking about the task of uh, Shiloh and the task of the end time believer. And today we covered about the pavement. This is talking about relationship with God and each other and our hearts. And so I pray that you may be able to uh, be the worker of God in these end times. And as you dedicate yourselves to God, like the Levites, like the Zadokites, God will bless you with the thousandfold, thousandfold, and the ten thousand, over ten thousandfold blessings, spiritually, physically, and materially. And I pray and blessings upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this precious time. Although we cannot study everything in this short time, you showed us the significance of the pavement and the 30 chambers of the Ezekiel's temple. And we give you thanks, honor, and glory to you. Father, help us to have pure hearts, sanctified hearts, renewed hearts by your spirit and your word. And so that we may be restored with you and with each other. Father, we pray for those who are suffering from illnesses. We pray for those who are suffering under fiery trials. Like Daniel's three friends, may you be with them and may they come out as pure gold and may we become like pillars who are unmovable, unshaken and will remain in your house forever. We thank you so much. In all these things we pray in Jesus' precious name with thanksgiving. Amen.